welcome to our talk on uh, environmental issues. So environmental issues with, re with respect to the Indian context and the global context will be discussed here based on the need perspective. So let me discuss the environmental issues po po point of view from NCRT point of view. So uh, in, in environmental issues, we are going to talk about the environmental pollution, which is the pivotal issue of all. So in the environmental issue, issues, we are going to talk about what is pollution. So pollution is any undesirable change to the environment. It can be a soil, it can be water, or it can be um, noise, or any other form which is going to affect the people. So because of population explosion, what happens is uh, the resources are limited. As a result, when we exploit the limited resources, it leads to pollution. Earlier there was a saying that uh, solution to pollution is dilution. We cannot stick to this earlier saying now because we want the three R's, recycle, reuse and reduce. So the symbol of today is three R's where it is reuse, reduce and recycle. So this way when we try to re re reuse the resources and reduce the existing exploitation of resources and recycle the resources. This way we can avoid uh, pollution or this way we can avoid polluting the limited natural resources. So now let us discuss about the various laws with per per pertinent to this pollution. There are very, very various environmental laws proposed to, con uh, to reduce this pollution and it could be the Environmental Protection Act, Water Act, then we have the Motor Vehicles Act and Air Act. So these acts are passed by Indian government to control pollution. So before that, uh, we have to discuss about the Stockholm Convention, which ha changed pers people's perspective and also the Rio Agenda, that is summit at the Earth's summit at Rio de Janeiro. So let us discuss about what is this Stockholm Convention and Rio Summit. In Stockholm Convention, Nineteen seventy-two, the world woke up for an important issue. So here, this is a, indeed an eye-opener for various environmental decisions made by different countries, and they have adopted various policies. Because the pioneer of these is going to be this uh, Stockholm Convention, followed by nineteen ninety-two's Rio Earth Summit. So this was followed by Rio Earth Summit. 1992. So what had happened in Stockholm conference and uh, Rio Earth Summit is that, so when the nations came across, they c came to know that we are exploiting our resources which will lead to, uh, you know, re reduction of resources and this also leads to uh, pollution at a very uh, global level. So to contain that, uh, people thought, we have to put an end to it and nations came across, they, uh, nearly 140 nations participated in the Stockholm conference and then they decided to curtail this pollution by means of various policies framed by them. Uh, so here this has led to a ban of DDT. Ban of DDT, this conference has led to the ban of DDT. So how this convention went for this ban on DDT is that there was a book which revolutionized people's perspective that is a book by Rachel Carson on Silent Springs. So this book was an eye opener wherein she, uh, a marine biologist, uh, Rachel Carson was a marine biologist who wrote about the effect of pesticides, the effect of pesticides in ecosystems and also in various trophic levels and she found that this these pesticides kept on accumulating and this led to biomagnification across trophic levels. So as a result of which these this Stockholm convention in 1972 
called for a ban, global ban on DDT, which was extensively used to control mosquitoes, which was extensively used to control lies in uh, World War soldiers and much more. So, this has led to the ban on DDT. So, the, that book, Rachel Carson, Silence Pink, has really changed per people's perspective and our understanding about how even DDT can be found in human breast milk. Then there was an, uh, 20 years passed and then another conference which really rocked, which really ha made every nation accountable was Rio Summit, Rio Earth Summit in 1992 or if we recall it as Rio Agenda 21 wherein they had nearly 21 agenda to be followed by all countries wherein they included uh, the ban on uh, CFC compounds and to cut down global warming that is carbon emission. So when, it, when we talk about global warming, we have also have to make a mention of a book which was written by the vice, former vice president of United States of America, Al Gore. So, Al Gore's book on Inconvenient Truth, Inconvenient Truth, gave emphasis about global warming and the repercussions of global warming, for which Al Gore was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his wonderful work on wonderful book Inconvenient Truth. So, in a similar context, there was an Indian, uh, our own Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrote about convenient action. So, Narendra Modi wrote about convenient action This is also a policy decisions how it can be made to control to curtail pollution. So that was uh, Narendra Modi's convenient action. So these are various books which has uh, really changed the people's perspective and also made every nation who is polluting accountable for what they are. So the, uh, there comes we, we talk about these three triple P's, triple P's in the sense polluter pays principle that is whoever pollutes is responsible to pay that is called polluter pays principle. Polluter pays principle. So, no more do we believe that solution to pollution is dilution. So, if you dilute, if you think that if we dilute the existing pollution that is the end, but it is no more an end. Now, every pollu uh, whoever pollutes will be held responsible by this polluter praise principle. And now, these conferences, especially the Rio, Rio summit, Rio earth summit has made every country, every corporate, every company accountable if they pollute. So, so, so as to reduce the global warming, as we are aware that the global warming situation is very bad as a, a result of which the you know the sea level is rising and then we have various floods in coastal regions and much more the sea level keeps on rising uh, and uh, we are expecting to 80 ppm to 300 ppm of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Though we may call that global warming is indeed a natural phenomenon, it is this natural phenomenon has been increased, hastened by anthropogenic activity. So we are responsible for this global warming and we the anthropogenic activities has increased the global warming which would have occurred in a long run. So, global warming is due to the increased carbon dioxide emission, especially the carbon dioxide emission uh, and uh, cut to cut down carbon dioxide emissions, there were two protocols formed that is one is Montreal protocol, another one is Kyoto protocol. The Montreal protocol, protocol emphasized the importance of reducing CFC. It reduces CFC, emission of CFC, chlorofluorocarbons. If chlorofluorocarbons are emitted from air conditioners and from um, uh, fire retardants and uh, any coolers, these CFCs can harm the stratospheric ozone. So, this uh, uh, as we know that at our atmosphere is made up of troposphere, stratosphere, then 
mesosphere, therm I thermosphere, ionosphere and then exosphere. So, but this particular CFC compound has an effect on the second layer which we call it a stratosphere. Here is where the stratosphere is present and the stratosphere has a spe special layer called ozone and this layer is very, very important because this protects. So, here is where our topo troposphere and here we have stratosphere, we all live in biosphere. So, this would be roughly around 8 to 12 kilometers, 12 to 50 kilometers would be stratosphere. So, within the stratosphere is our layer which we call it as ozone, ozone layer. So, if the ozone layer is above our head, it is a very good, uh, but if the ozone layer is present in biosphere, it is uh, detrimental to the human health. So, this we call it as bad ozone, the ozone which is present in the uh, upper layers that is stratospheric layer we call it as good ozone. So, this will help. So, when the sun's light is here, this you the sun's light will also give us ultraviolet. So, this stratospheric ozone has the capacity to repel this ultraviolet so that the harmful ultraviolet will not reach the biosphere in which we are living. So, thereby it is a shield which protects us from ultraviolet. So, these CFCs go up in the atmosphere and reaches the stratosphere and prevent the oxygen and nascent oxygen formation to give rise to uh, ozone O3. So, this ozo, uh, ozone which is a deflector of UV is because of this CFC pr production from man which disrupts the ozone layer. So, they form this Montreal protocol in which people nations signed wherein they wanted to phase out the ozone. In fact, they have phased out the ozone and we have alternatives to ozone which are less harmful which we call it as R22. R22 is an another substance, it is also a coolant, but only thing is it has replaced CFCs. CFCs are very harmful whereas, this uh, R22 is a indeed a very uh, coolant which, uh, which is used still in the uh, various refrigerators and cooling system, but it is safer when compared to CFC. CFC really deplete the ozone layer. Now, we have as a result of Montreal protocol, nations have phased out CFC successfully much ahead of their uh, deadline. So, that is a one of the success of Montreal protocol where they wanted to cut down the CFC emission from various nations from the refrigerators and air conditioners and the fire retardants. Then we come to another important protocol which we call it as Kyoto protocol. So, in Kyoto protocol, the idea of Kyoto protocol is they want the nations to reduce their carbon emissions thereby preventing global warming. So, carbon footprint was formed, every nation, every work, every project has to decide how much of carbon they are going to emit. So, in that case they have to devise strategies to reduce this carbon emission. That was uh, Kyoto protocol, but still US is uh, avoiding Kyoto protocol because they are the primarily responsible for carbon emission and China countries like developing countries like China and India. We are, uh, we, as we are in the stage of development, we wanted to, uh, you know, uh, give, uh, give relaxation for our uh, carbon emissions. However, uh, United States is not uh, sticking to this uh, Kyoto protocol at all. Uh, so, these protocols are made as a result of the Rio Convention. Now, we are going to talk about the different types of pollution. So, the pollution could be air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, we will discuss one by one soil pollution, then air pollution, then water pollution. So, as we discuss about one by one, let us see what are the agents which cause pollution to our waters. So, water is the elixir of life. So, without water, there can we cannot expect life in, a, in our planet. So, the very reason for life to exist in this planet is because of water that is in a soluble form and oxygen presence in our planet. So, this water uh, if it gets polluted, it will have its own deleterious effects on the health of various plants and animals. So, now, uh, now let us discuss about water pollution. What are the major uh, agents which cause water pollution? So, uh, water pollution could be mainly due to microorganisms, we call it as microbes are responsible for 
pollution of waters especially in our country the problem is fecal contamination of water is the primary reason for uh, water pollution. Then apart from that we also have some uh, elements which also are responsible for water pollution like um, presence of um, arsenic which is a very common in Bangladesh and India and parts of Americas. Then we talk about um, various other pollutions, pollutants like arsenic, then nitrates in water, then we also talk about a very worse pollution which we call it as heavy metal presence in waters that is mercury presence, okay, mercury presence in water or sometimes even cadmium present in water. Then we also have fluoride presence in water. then cadmium, then we also have fluorides in water. These are the various pollutants of water apart from the microorganisms which is a major threat to our waters whereas these water pollution may result in various diseases which we will talk, talk about as waterborne diseases. So let us now talk, discuss about the elements present in water. So presence of arsenic in water is a you know this is common among the uh, India and Bangladesh where the well water itself is contaminated with arsen arsenic as a result they have arseno arsenicosis uh, where, uh, where uh, the problem with the various organs result uh, as, a, as a result of the presence of arsenic in waters. So uh, we have to avoid the water which is having arsenic or uh, use some chemical methods to remove arsenic from the waters. Then presence of nitrates in water can result in bubble boy syndrome where uh, excessive nitrate also is not good for health. Then presence of mercury, mercury is indeed a heavy metal with specific gravity greater than 5. So as a result of this, this uh, mercury has an affinity for uh, fatty tissues, it can go and deposit in our fatty tissues. So it is a very dangerous chemical present if it is present in waters. So mainly is uh, the problem uh, industrial effluent or industrial uh, emission uh, as a result of industrial emission the mercury may get mixed up with our uh, drinking portable water. So this, uh, this has led to a very uh, renowned problem called as Minamata disease. Minamata disease for in which many people of uh, many Japanese were affected because of this Minamata disease and uh, for a period of time after they consumed you know uh, food contaminated with uh, mercury and uh, drank water contaminated with mercury they ended up in having this Minamata disease. So this Minamata disease as a result of this there will be numbness and uh, it is indeed very fatal. Uh, so next is cadmium. These are some of the very sturdy chemicals present in our earth. Uh, we call it as heavy metals and uh, the one another heavy metal is cadmium. This cadmium uh, can also cause itai itai disease. Itai itai disease. which is also fatal. Both these diseases, Ichaitai and uh, Minamata disease are indeed fatal to human beings. And fluorides, so presence of fluorides in water can also result in uh, dental fluorosis and skeletal fluorosis. Dental fluorosis which, you, which, is, which can be visible outside but uh, skeletal fluorosis we cannot see it at outside. So dental fluorosis you can see brown specks on the brown specks on the teeth. So if there is brown specks on the teeth, brown spots like you know, uh, this leads to this dental fluorosis. We can also find this fluoride accumulation in the skeletal system which is called as skeletal fluorosis, skeletal fluorosis. So now we have discussed about the uh, chemicals which are present in water as a result of pollution like arsenic, nitrates, mercury, cadmium, fluorides. Okay, so each one results in some disease, arsenic, arsenicosis and uh, 